So over the two weeks, um, I've been busy with schoolwork, but I have done some work. Uh, this week, I've mostly been focusing on the bestiary as well as map work, uh, getting you know, regions all prepped and ready to have the region maps made, um, you know, getting those ready for the team, a bunch of random encounter maps for those regions as well. So, you know, just making sure we have all eggs in our relative baskets in that regard. Um, but the thing that I worked on the previous week, which I haven't worked on this week at all, but the, the bones are there, um, would be an update to the mission structure of the Living World document, which is found under the uh, adventure folder for missions. Uh, that one now lists our estimated wealth values for you now different mission types, different mission tiers, um, which includes wealth reward, uh, loot reward, as well as magic item rewards and the like, uh, and then the different tiers, missions, and, and so on and so forth. Um, which, this is just initial thoughts. I'm going to be testing it out in some of my other games. Uh, feel free to test it out as well and just, you know, try out the math yourself. But uh, this is the document. I'm just going to go and link that there. Um, into the Discord uh, and post it in general. So links you now. There we go. Alright. Um, but the document itself goes over the different wealth rewards available, but it also goes into a expansion upon experience ways to earn experience. Uh, one of the things I've been working on with downtime has been making it so downtime is possible for uh, people who want to just play purely merchants. Because I know we have those. Um, they can still gain experience from crafting, from uh, mercantilism, and, and so on and so forth. Though at, you know, an exceedingly slow rate compared to adventuring. Um, so part of this shows you the experience track players can gain. So, you know, how much experience they need to level up. Also lists their amount of hit dice that they have, as well as, you know, any ASIs or feats that they might gain. Below that, you can see the general experience that they should be looking at when they uh, complete a milestone or otherwise an objective or an encounter. Um, and then, you know, various modifiers to that. Uh, additionally, we then go into the different types of downtime activities that are currently made that can provide experience. Um, those days required to actually gain the experience uh, are 100% a work in progress. I'm still testing out the values and and where they end up being and they'll also be heavily dependent on how much downtime days we provide in a given update uh at the moment though i have it set to your tier of play and experience per x number of days that you spend yeah out of mission xp i know it was something that was requested so i've been i've been working on a system for it um and there's currently six activities that can provide you experience from downtime, um, there's the basic adventuring job. You're, you know, doing minor side quests. They're like, oh, go help uh, the old Nan save her kitty from the tree. It's it's the adventuring job that you're like, did I really need to do this? But, you know, pays the bills. Um, gives you money uh, as if you are a mercenary. So it does give you a bit more than, than certain downtime days will provide. Um, but... While well, it does provide you a flat base rate, it does not scale as well as basic missions, and it does not scale as well as professions who specialize in their profession. So if you're like a Master Smith, for example, you can certainly make more money as a Master Smith than you could as a basic adventurer, uh, doing the downtime base specifically. If you're doing actual adventuring, your wealth is going to still be pretty freaking solid. Um, I, I can't say if it's going to be solid in terms of selling magical items as a merchant, because that's Probably gonna be a lot of player economy based um at this point in time but you know uh it, it is a thing uh, you could just level up from crafting potions and selling potions yes um the other one as carousing which is uh unlike in verum where it was here you get some inspiration uh carousing is specifically you acquiring contacts and pcs and working in with the influence system that is currently in progress which i've been looking at and Giving a few tweaks to uh, nowhere near ready to, to reveal the updates to that one, but uh, something I've been working on. Um, 
Then there's crafting experience gain. You can gain experience from just crafting magical items or mundane items. Uh, mercantilism is gaining experience from selling stuff, being a merchant. Um, pit fighting is you're fighting in an arena. You get experience for that. Uh, and practicing a profession is, oh, I'm, I'm a blacksmith. Uh, oh, I'm a lumberjack. Oh, I'm a farmer. Uh, that one is uh, tied with carousing in terms of how much experience you can gain for it. It's the least amount of experience uh, least effective experience gain of the downtimes at the moment, but, you know, it's an option. Um, from there, though, we go into experience gain and cap, so it just basically states that players can uh, choose to stop gaining experience, so if they don't want to level up, they can choose to be like, I'm going to stay here for a bit, um, and it goes into the, how that works. Um, I've been working on a, like a, a chart, like a little graph of how this thing might look out in terms of where people level up and whatnot but that's not on the thing as you can see it says work in progress um another thing i've been working on is the downtime activity sheet which is massive and a lot of it's work in progress uh if you guys have ideas that you think would work really well for this particular document which uh let me go and post these as well into general the link uh there's the uh downtime list uh this one can be found under uh adventure cirrus rules um this one itself, you have a whole bunch of different downtime options. About five, maybe six, maybe seven of them are, are basically done. At least the, the base idea I have for them. Um, so that is a, you know, we're, we're, I'm making progress on it. Uh, people are free to provide their own ideas to what they think should happen here. Um, but overall, the core stuff like crafting, for shopping, for mercantilism, which is basically selling stuff. Um, revelry, which is the new version of carousing. So if you want to gain inspiration, you do revelry. Um, then there's basic specific downtime activities that are like more restricted than the generic ones. So like adventure, you have to be an adventuring player rather than a civilian uh, to do an adventure. Um, training, you have to be an adventurer to do that one. Uh, and so on and so forth. And there's a giant freaking list. I'm still working on them. Um, but, you know, there are you know, a, a lot of options there. Uh, in terms of stacking of experience, uh, the way that the experience works is that every day that you put in to this thing, a timer will tick up. Once it hits the requisite time spent, you'll gain the experience. Um, it does not degrade or anything like that. It's just, have you spent X number of days? Okay, here's your experience. And as always, per the experience document, you can choose to not accept experience. Um, but yes, no, it, it is a, uh, a thing. So you could work on, say, crafting and mercantilism and, you know, gain experience. They can both tick upwards. It's just, uh, I don't intend us to have a mixture of crafting days versus uh, downtime days. They're all just going to be downtime. So it, it's really what you want to spend them on. Um, speaking of downtime, in terms of mercantilism, though, uh, I currently have it set up in a way that it's based upon the carrying capacity of your various trading caravans, which gives reasons for merchants to actually buy caravans, you know, hire wagons, uh, wagoneers, and all that. Uh, I'm not fully sold on the idea. If people have ideas to expand upon that or adjust it, uh, feel free to do so. But as it stands, um, mercantilism and shopping are both set up to be based upon the player's uh, a version of their carrying capacity per day spent on these things. And that's how much they can sell with that downtime. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's per hour, so technically, you know, I'm just going to click on it. Uh, for every day spent, okay, for every day you get these, these ticks. Um, so you get 50 pounds for basic mercantilism worth of items for every downtime day you spend acting as a merchant. Uh, any carrying capacity from your uh, wagons or shops or anything like that adds on to this. So if you have a shop that has like a carrying capacity of like, you know, 5,000 pounds, you're probably going to be freaking fine. Gives reason to buy a shop. Um, but, you know, that's a thing. That's how I have it currently set up. Uh, another thing with the downtime days for selling and buying is that they have really low numbers and it's based upon how proficient you are with merchant tools. As you can see, 
they are like if you're untrained you can only get uh, up to 20% of the market value of, for an item for, uh, for selling the item that's you know pretty oof if you're a master you can get up to 60% so uh, higher than the standard 50% um, now this is just for downtime days if you're you know going to do some in session stuff you're free to wheel and deal or if you're doing things with players you're free to wheel and deal but this gives incentives for players to trade with each other Well, yeah, I mean, they're a master level merchant. It's, it's going to be, you know. Yeah. Uh, additionally, though, if you take the merchant profession, the uh, birth profession trait, uh, the bonus is increased by 10%. So technically, a master merchant profession can get 70%. That stacks. Yeah, I mean, I, I can definitely see some merchants doing some pretty crazy wheeling and dealing, which is why these are work in progress. People are free to provide their input. But uh, that's where I'm currently standing at right now. I almost had it set to 10% and then increasing from there to bring it to 50% for master and then plus 10% if you're a merchant profession. But I wanted to, to get the baseline uh, a little above the standard 50%. Um, going with that, though, shopping is a similar way. The number of days you have sets up the number of um, poundage you can carry as well as the uh, quality of the items you can purchase. So you are limited in what you can buy based on the number of days that you spend. Uh, and additionally to that, the wealth or the cost of the items is drastically increased. Uh, for example, an untrained merchant is spending 500% of the market value to buy an item. So if you're wanting to buy a suit of, you know, like plate armor that cost uh, 100 for ease, it's going to cost you 500 gold instead. If you're untrained and you're using downtime to buy items. Uh, which is another incentive for players to, uh, you know, trade with each other. Or we'll teach them to one farmer. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, be proficient in the merchant tools and have the merchant profession. Uh, one of the other things I've been working on with this document is ideas for every single profession and birth trait to have something that benefits them for downtime. So, like, the noble profession, or the uh, the courtier, that's, that's the one I have named it, uh, that one will have benefits for carousing. Um, yeah, just random things like that, depending on what, what you choose. Uh, they will be thematic to the particular downtime activity, so, like, the acolyte profession will be benefiting towards the performing of religious ceremonies and services. So, you know, there's those options. Um, other than those two documents, which I, I intend to work on going forward this week, uh, so I can, you know, fully flesh them out and get all those downtimes finished. Um, I've been working on a lot of monsters, which I mentioned at the beginning. Um, I'd say I've made about 30 or so. I've made, a, I've made a decent amount. A lot more lower level creatures, a lot of the uh, mid-tier creatures as well, so like, I'm working towards the uh, 3 to 6 range of creatures now, so we have a, a decent chunk of 1s, 2s, 3s, 4s, 5s, and 6s at this point in time. Um, I've also been working on adding lore as I add them, so they, you know, have stuff for the beast when I send you guys it again. Is that for selling or is that for buying? Your suggestion. So that'd be 10% for untrained, 15, 20, 25, 25 for master with an additional 10, so 35 for a master. I mean, I can see that. It's a little low, but I can see it. I would say that um, I can I can definitely see 10% working as a baseline, but I'd want trained to be a bigger jump than just 5%. Because untrained just means you have no idea what prices are actually supposed to be. You're like, I think that's right. Or are you really bad at haggling and somehow, even though you knew that the price was like 30 gold, somehow you ended up paying 60 gold. Because, you know, you're bad at math. 
trained is where you actually know what you're doing. Very excellent work with the mission structure and downtime. That's another two critical launch documents in the works. Mm -hmm. I'll take a gander at the mission structure document over the week, but I do have a question about some of it right now. Yeah. I see. I see where your math is going. That's fair. Well, judging from the conversation they were having, the uh, Light World General, that's not far off. Yeah, no, a lot of them are wanting to highly underpriced things. So they and then can turn around and resell it. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're wanting to be merchants. So they are. It's true. Um, one of the things that I, I still have, I have not fully implemented it into the world map on the uh, the framework, but the thing that Sultan was working on, the uh, merchant system that you can auto-generate like various values for what they're trading and what they're selling and whatnot. Uh, that will definitely be helpful for if we're doing an update and we're like, hey, look, suddenly this country needs more iron. Iron's a hot commodity. You guys want to sell it here? So, yeah. Nothing that it's in the works. It's, it's basically that I just need to tweak some of the values. As far as Cyric goes as a setting, it's very flexible and open from what you've said before. Yeah. Based on the description of campaign tier missions, that's presumably still the plan. But is there a level limitation on the different game types as like before? Or can people start interacting with new things being introduced into the world from the start? What do you mean? Basically, do you want people to only be able to do campaign level missions from a certain level, like say 12 or higher, or can they theoretically start at any point? No, no, they can, they can do any mission type. Uh, even if they are in a campaign, unless the DM specifically has a like, uh, mission locked or whatever uh, we're calling, I forgot what we called it, those, um, a player could sign up for, um, other missions, assuming that you know they're not locked, they can even sign uh, up for like a one shot. I thought we wanted to stay away from people like being in multiple missions. Well, yeah. What I mean is, if they're in a campaign and the campaign is on pause for like downtime, they can sign up for other missions. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. If they're like actively in a mission, they you know they can't be on the second one, but they can you know. Uh. The, the idea of campaign specifically is that there is downtime in between them. Where they, you know, the players can take a breather and, and you know, better gauge what's going on and, and how to handle the bigger situation that's going on. Um, Just wanted to make sure because obviously in the past we had issues of people uh, being in multiple missions and then some people not being in games at all because yeah. things that the people were taking slots up. Should be fine. Uh, let's see here. You know, uh, no, no restrictions on on players being able to. I think like, I phrased that wrong. What I'm asking is basically, there's no listed mission type level limitations. So can campaign missions be created by DMS from any point? Yep. So can a DM potentially start introducing stuff into the setting from day one, assuming it's verified by you in a region head? If if their team is doing some pretty fancy uh, like information gathering and they really like the story that the uh, the team or the DM wove uh, and they want to make it a campaign, they are free to do so. Uh, 
they do need to get it, you know, gone through from mission standpoint so we can get an idea how it might interact with the world, but... That's excellent. Yeah, I'm, I'm open for a... No arbitrary level limitations for story impact. Indeed. Yeah, no, I'm open for, for uh, player or DM-centric campaigns. Uh, there will obviously be the overarching region campaigns that we're working on, but... Yeah. DM-specific ones or player-driven ones are A-OK. -okay. Yeah, no. Uh, the the idea that we might have civilians still is, is still on the table, and I've been working on rule sets assuming that we have them. So, like you'll see from the thing that you posted, the wording specifies an adventuring player known as a PC. That is just to ensure that if we do release civilians as an option, um, they know what they can and cannot do. Uh, so I'd be like, yeah. oh, we have to update that all also opens up a lot more flexibility for game masters to explore their own stories while still being linked to Cyric. Mm -hmm. I'll talk with you a bit later about the setting and hashing out some of the basics to maybe primer game masters. Yeah. Mm hmm. All right. Uh, overall, though, that is that is what I had to update. Um, anything on the docket? Or anything additionally with the subject? Or topic, not subject, topic. Hello? Got one more person that signed up to want to be staff. Yeah, very nice. But there are RP events. And I mean, we can always use more RP events. And Shrub is uh, wilting. Yeah. So. They are still away. I know Sky was interested in RP events, if you're you know interested in looking over that area. Since you did it back in the past. And I don't know if you're still interested, but... Uh, yeah. There's an opening until necessary. I agree. We, we should have some people versed in crafting. On my end, I can just say that we're going through the list of launch required stuff, and that's going decently, especially with your two documents crossing another two FF. Wara is actually here if we want to talk a bit about the launch economy stuff and some minor tech preparation. Oh, look, a wild Wara appeared. Hello. Uh, hello. Yeah. Uh, Legacy's been talking to me about basically for the most part, ledgers and stuff for economy tracking and their use in making bot commands and getting stuff tracked by the bot and having the bot basically do everything so there's far less overhead for people to worry about. Mm -hmm. So yeah, um, talking to people in economy is probably where I should start to see what their current solutions are and then working with them to either transition those into something a bot can manage something uniform unless they're already ready to go in that sort of way and then i can just figure it out from there really all right and we definitely have some time in terms of crafting um just because we're not gonna be releasing downtime days uh on on launch it's gonna be at least two weeks of just rp based stuff that players can do no no downtime available but uh you know, uh, in terms of what we need for the bot, um, you know, just just message me times that we can meet and we can set up a schedule, uh, a meeting for it, and we can go over in depth the requirements. Um, the crafting system itself is all in the equipment guide. I can I can send that your way. A lot of it is built in a way that coding could be used to just automate it. I mean, I have an entire crafting sheet where it's automated for me. So, mm -hmm. but uh, having okay. a um, that will be helpful. What times are you normally available? Just so I can. Um, I am normally available in the afternoon, 
uh, you know, CST time. Um, that said, I do have class uh, Tuesdays, Thursdays, and so those days are pretty much out. Um, other than that, it's relatively open. Just, you know, let me know when I, I can make time. Sure. Sure thing. Sounds good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Particularly, you two should probably discuss which documents need to be created for launch at least. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Structure framework first. Yeah. All right. Good stuff. Good, good stuff. Indeed. Um, I just glanced over at my uh, downtime sheet again. I remembered to, to mention this. Um, base rules, which is something I've been running by for a long time. Uh, inspiration has been giving players advantage, uh, which is something that I've been doing for a very, very long time for all my games. Uh, for the living world, uh, I currently have it set up to be a point of inspiration gives you a reroll. You take the new result, even if it's worse. Mm -hmm. uh, which, for, for Sky, since, you know, game Sundays, uh, that goes into effect starting now. Essentially, inspiration is a lucky roll. Yeah. And uh, character sheets, you can see that they can have up to three. Yeah. Can you chain them? No, no. Uh, inspiration is you take the new roll regardless of the results. Uh, essentially, you have to take this roll. Use uh, inspiration. That's your roll. Period. Full stop. It immediately applies. Yep. And the benefit of lucky is you can chain lucky. Uh, inspiration is, oh dear God, I mean, re-roll this. Oh shit, I rolled another one. Okay, well, I guess I'm fucked. Does that mean people can have fun using it off of a lucky roll? I mean, yeah. You know, they roll three luckies and. Like, all of them are really bad, and they're like, maybe I can get a fourth one with inspiration, and then it's, you know, still bad. Or it's really nice now. Yeah, surely they wouldn't do it to me again, right? See, exactly. We're going to see a lot of players go, I don't want to die, I don't want to die. Uses all three lucky rolls and the inspiration. Rolls low. Every mm -hmm. time. It's like, alright, I'm just going to go make my new character. I'll be back. Yeah. Um, part of Rebel, though. Uh, is that it also can be used to reduce sanity damage as per the sanity rules, which I've been looking over and wrapping my head around uh, and, you know, formulating the questions I wish to ask. Just, you know, large pool of stuff to do. Anyways, uh, it is working in towards the sanity system we have. So it, it can be used akin to the other downtime options, which would be, you know, going to see a professional uh, to help, you know, talk your way through. This is the other option where you drown yourself in your sorrows. It's not very helpful, but it does something. Kind of counterproductive, but you know, as an adventurer, you really have two options. Counterproductive, but productive, or productive and productive. Basically, I'm, I'm using the darkest dungeon mechanic of they go to the bar. Cool, cool. Okay. I'm pretty sure the tavern keeper is a medical professional. Don't tell me otherwise. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm still trying to figure out a way on how to uh, mechanically set up revelry uh, benefits tied to the level of revelry you're doing. So, like, if you're doing a modest revelry, it's not going to be as effective as an aristocratic. But, uh, that's, yeah, that's something I'm working on. Yeah. I just know a uh, therapist was an option in the, uh, the sanity rolls is listed that you can cure uh, your charisma modifier and sanity minimum one mm. in the uh, the sanity rules. So I was like, oh, let's, let's add a crossing version where you, you know, go and revel drunkenly or Good other yeah. Yeah. Um. All right. Anything else to bring up? Um. This is definitely not important and certainly not needed for launch, but... Uh... Vampire stuff was posted in the balance stuff. If you want to look at that eventually, again, not necessary, but does probably need balance to look over at some point. So. Also, I added way more stuff to it. Wow. Wow. Is that the one I've looked over, or is that a different one? Uh, it's the same one. Still. Okay. 
Um, like I said, there's new stuff. And also, uh, I did mention this to you in a DM. I think you might have missed it, which is fine. Um, the reason I was asking you for disease rules the other day uh, is I wanted to add, um, if you were familiar with the one quest in Vampire the Masquerade, uh, where there's a plague cult spreading plagues. Is that like Act 3 in Bloodlines? Uh, Act 2. Act 2, okay. I, I got to the very beginning of Act 2. I'm not too far into it. Uh, well, basically, uh, the idea is that they've, there's a blood power called Plague Bearer. They can afflict themselves with a disease of some kind. There's three to choose from. Mm-hmm. And uh, it has the potential to be very setting harmful, which is why I was unsure about it. Yeah. Um, there is currently a spell called Epidemic that's in existence that players could technically take. Um, it's a very high-level spell. And... It is very much, I believe, I have listed as a corruption spell, so players casting it are 100% going down the evil path. Um, it's one of those things, if you do take this feature, you're probably going to be enemy number one for most heroic players. Uh, choose at your own discretion. Uh, I'm not against you having disease powers. I mean, it makes sense that they can do as vampires in the Masquerade do. Uh, take the blood of a diseased creature and then, you know, spread said disease. But, uh... I would definitely recommend if you do have such a feature, it's of a higher level. Yeah, it is level six, which is actually the same level as Epidemic. Um, gonna... Though, incidentally, Epidemic's on the Vampire spell list, which I put uh, together. Look at that. All right. All right. Yeah, that's, that's fine, then. I should probably take a look at that to see what you did with it specifically, mm-hmm. though, because I mostly looked at it to say what spells from Zyrk I could add to their spell. Mm-hmm. Uh, I might need to update Epidemic, though, because I, I believe I made it before I made the Infectious condition, so I might need to adjust the wording somewhat. I'm pretty sure Infectious just does what Epidemic does with, as a condition. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I, I saw your, your post. I didn't fully read through it, so I marked it as unread. Yeah, no, no problem. Like I said, I know you're busy, and yeah. I'm mostly just <laughs> bothering with you un- with unimportant stuff, but, you know. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, Vampire stuff's pretty important. Mm-hmm. That's yeah, right. well, I realized I forgot the first level uh, bloodline trait for the Aluka clan, so I had to add that. Oh, no. Uh, but yeah, other than that, the vampire race specifically, I have also put together. Um, mm-hmm. That's in that document as well at the very bottom. It's also in a separate document, but just for ease of use. Yeah. Uh, that's all I got on my end. All right. Very good, very good. As a note, Vampire Class is pretty cool. Check it out. Get feedback. Um, Correct. I know Dr. Uh, it is unlockable. I know Dr. Monty, or Doc Monty, I don't really want to say his name, uh, ran his game, uh, I think, last night. Mm-hmm. So once we go over his stuff, he will be on the running to uh, be ascended. Very nice, very nice. A new hand touches the beacon now. Um, it could work as prestige class, but the idea is that... Well, I mean, Sith is typing, so I'll, I'll let them describe it. My thought is, with the core class, we can have that. We can also have prestige classes that are more specialized. So, you know. Yeah, the idea behind Vampire being a full class rather than a prestige class is that, um, at least in a lot of Vampire lore, uh, becoming a Vampire is like going through a rebirth of some sorts. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Plus, it's a really fancy class, and it kind of touches on to Psionics, in a way, because the blood powers are similar in nature to Psionics. So, uh, mm-hmm. yeah, it's good stuff there. Actually, I guess in regards to how you want blood powers to work, and at least in their current iteration, is are they considered spells or abilities? Because I've currently got them listed as abilities, essentially, but I don't know if we want like counter spell to affect them. I would mark them as supernatural abilities, unless they replicate a spell, in which case they should be marked as magical so they can be counter spelled. Okay. On a less launch focused side, although this is kind of related, how are we looking on the patron side? How many do we still need worked on or made? I was reading Sky's post. Can you repeat the first half? 
for the entirety if it's easier. On a less launch focused side, although this is kind of related, how are we looking on the patron side? How many do we still need worked on or made? I I kept thinking you were talking about Patreon. I was like, I haven't touched Patreon yet. But no, pa patron, <laughs> patron, yes, patrons. Um, I want at least one of each of them to have a basic outline. I have one currently on Rolled Anvil. A lot of them are still open for people to work on. Um, for us to be launch ready for them. Patrons are one of those things where they're going to be very, very, very mysterious. Uh, so I don't really need a lot of information for them. It could just be a basic paragraph. Um, and that's all we really need to provide. Um, Patron of crowdsourcing. Patreon. <laughs> Yes. And so the majority are still unfilled? Yeah, so the majority are still unfilled. Uh, I, I do have basic lineups and ideas for what they can do, and I can really just go through them and just plop that basic idea onto the page for them. But, uh, you know, time. Mm -hmm. Doesn't help that a lot of the ones that I had more details on, uh, I ascended to full DD hood uh, after the the fall during the Age of Omens, so, you know. Like Ba'ebe, they were a patron before. Now they're a god. You know, uh, that, that one, I would say it take... For the entirety list of all the patrons, probably about the same time it's going to take me That's to finish the, one the that Adides. We have complete And which archetype are they? Ebe'e is a deity of death. Um, they are a patron to the Gripply. Um, I'm trying to remember top of my head. Uh, patron of death. They're patron or they're a deity of death. They're patron to Gripply. Their portfolio includes nature, uh, the underworld. As well as rebirth. Which um, pact? Oh, 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 they were a, uh, uh, Fathomless, I think, patron. But they're they're not a patron anymore. They're a full deity. Yeah. Um, the list of patrons. I think I'll grab that though. That marks them by their pact type. Let's see here. Pantheons, occult patrons of Kydran. Grab that link and post to that link. And, you know, it's fine. I've never played Chrono Trigger, so I don't really. <laughs> Anyways, um, there's a list of, of different beings. Um, some of them, people will just be like, oh, look, it's Orcus. I know exactly what they're about. Um, some, like Featherwind, uh, only Sky will really understand. Um, some, like a Devon, only I really understand. Because that is a, a old character I played that did some crazy shenanigans and stuff happened. Um, yeah. Some of them are just, you know, free, free to, for you to work on. But, uh, yeah, it's a long list. Don't really need a lot of information on them, though. Uh, Wandering Gun is the only one currently filled out. Yes. The rest is open to work on then? Open to work on, uh, yes. There's there's some of them that are actually already done. I just haven't put them on here. Like, uh... Oh, where is he? Uh, yeah, the Fathomless, I believe. The Fathomless. Nope. Uh, uh, Mordagon and Fardagon. Uh, those two are, I believe, completed. Thaloon is, uh, yeah. Uh, so those are some patrons that are done. I just need to put them on here. Do you have a list of which ones are done out of the list on there? Uh, Argon, Morgon, and Alun, 100% done. We can just put them on there. Um, the Gwenhani Coven, I know what they're about. Uh, they're, they're actively a pretty big part in the Thursday campaign. Bruja campaign. Um, I haven't added them to the uh, the world anvil at this point in time, though. Or, yeah. Uh, 
purposes on if they live or not. Which is why Coven has three listed. Uh, Bullock Voss is also another option in there. So it, it's really, uh, I don't know what's going to happen there, but I'm going to, I have their concepts. So those two, I can just plop them on. I'm just waiting. If you type out the text real quick, I'll mark them down for when I go over Divinity. I mean, spoilers. I, we, I can send you the, the notes for them. I heard two names and then the coven. Yeah. So these two, they're covered. Uh, I'm just going to go down the list and give you things that are covered from, from what I have. Uh, I'm going to ignore all the ones that are just pre-set, like Ace, D&D, Knowledge. So like Demogorgon and Orcus. Those, those have lore basically already. Yep, that's perfect. Uh, so let's see, this one's also completed. Um... <laughs> yeah, these are the ones that absolutely already have a decent amount of information on them. I just need to get it on here, so. Uh, do also have stuff. Uh, I named you that. I'm skipping the uh, ones that uh, Jokey listed, by the way. Oh, Nerp. Mm -hmm. On um, the binder page, I think it's the third level people you can vi visage with. You have two of them that say the one in the prime, unless that is supposed to be that way. There, there's quite a few things for the binder. It just, uh, if there's an issue, just post it in Firehouse and I'll sure. update it. Like how the second level find don't have a uh, they're down one ability compared to like all the other ones yeah i think the one i put on there is from the pdf and the most up-to-date version is the doc x so you know you know actually it's on here too. Oh, double tapped it there we go and then All right, those are the ones I have a decent understanding of what they need to be uh, as you get them on the World Anvil. Every other patron, uh, I might have, like, basic information, like Caldoranthanum is a brass dragon, uh, and they're from Kalbesh. But other than that, the players never really did stuff with that particular quest line, so I didn't go full details into it. So it's got a lot of room to uh, to expand upon. Yeah, some other things like that, like a, uh, you know, Avalok the Void. A lot of the uh, the base D and D stuff, um, you'll obviously need to have some alterations in names and titles. So, like instead of being like within the region of Cormir. Uh, things of that nature will mean to be changed and altered. Uh, for the most part, though, a lot of the demonic lore, uh, anything that is altered should be on the lore document in the lore folder. But a lot of it's pretty similar to base demon lore. Uh, to Pathfinder's demon lore, specifically. Yeah. Though, if the DD doesn't exist in Pathfinder, then exist in Favorone and you can use Favorone's as inspiration because I use both for a lot of uh, the demon and devil stuff. Now, uh, if you're interested in the de uh, the demon prince Baphomet, they're dead. You know, 
can't use them. They're just dead. Players killed them. Yeah. You can thank Sky for that. Mm -hmm. I can't believe I can't worship <laughs> Baphomet now. Unbelievable. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's a replacement. Some uh, another demon prince took their place, but uh, Baphomet specifically is is dead. Their Solange was taken. Pictures. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I mean, some Classic of the hellish power vacuum. Yeah. Kill one, and another instantly rises up. Pretty much. I mean, the Minotaurs felt a little bit of a twinge there, but it, it fixed itself pretty quickly. Can't believe Bob from accounting took over his job. <laughs> it's always Bob from accounting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Anyways, anything else to uh, to note to discuss? I mean, of course, fuck Ted. Can't think anything on the training side outside of just waiting on uh lots of lore slash background stuff I'll poke you about in messages since it's probably spoilers, mm -hmm. but otherwise think we're pretty set. Alright. Training seems to be uh, moving forward nicely. Very nice, very nice. Um anything anyone would like to bring up? Or does it seem like we're at a good point? Let's see what Sky posts. Oh yeah, some of the patrons listed on this list are not uh, listed as a subclass option on the Warlock class. Uh, don't worry, I'll, I'll be adding them. Or they'll be unlockable, either which way. I'll um, keep working on those launch systems and documents. You and Wara should get the meeting for the launch ledgers and documents set up. Mm -hmm. And I still need to go through the departments slowly. Yeah. Um, another thing of note, the Inquisitor class. I've been working on a new subclass for that as well. Uh, people are also free to work on their own subclasses for it. Um, as it only possessing three subclasses makes it a little, uh, a little sad. I, I can definitely see there's more uh, room for expansion for it. Uh, so if you have any fancy ideas, whether you are a member of staff or you're, you know, someone in the community who likes creating stuff, feel free to post ideas. I'll, I'll take a look at them. You know, I keep an eye on the, uh, the homebrew channel. Um, as for the scale caller, uh, most of that will probably be some form of tying to the Elderia campaign. Uh, alternatively, if you make a pact with a dragon you find in a campaign uh, you know your dm's running that's another way to unlock it uh basically if you're running a, a campaign for your group of players and you're like hey there's this dragon egg that we found and i want to give the players the ability to take this class like yeah that's sure that works for me so you know just need to have a reason to tap it you can't just be like i have a dragon because i wanted to start with the dragon so it's kind of like a dragon heart where you have to become one with a dragon. Pretty much. Yeah. And if it dies, you die. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you basically die. I mean, no one wants to lose their dragon friend. <laughs> Dying inside, at the very least. You know, it will live on. You can't believe that class is just dragon riders of Kern. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. Oh, I actually had a question. Yes. Um. So I'm not actually sure, sure how we handled this in the past, but for the purposes of people with like shape shifting abilities, where they can change into uh, animals like druids, um, and whatever else, uh. Do we want to run uh, mobs for them that are more akin to the other living world 
level creatures because otherwise it feels like they're I transform into a bear that's just innately weaker than this other bear. Uh, and I don't if know if that's the If they answer. want to transform into any beast that fits their CR, they are free to do so. Anything that we have in our bestiary is in line stat wise. Okay. Uh, generally, they'll only be able to transform into uh, mooks and elites. So they're not going to be able to transform into anything higher than that. But, you know, that's still oh, yeah. a decent list. So it's sort of following the whole druid has to see the wild shape, the, the animal thing. But in this case, it's the druid has to steal the token from the DM. Basically, like the base listing of animals and beasts that we have, you know, just like, oh, I'm going to Google by the bear. Uh, that's fine. Uh, if you want to grab the Zeric bear, you got to get the stats. Which means you got to see it. Note: Don't let them see a bear. <laughs> got it. I mean, you can't see the bear; it's wrapped in darkness. You I mean, can't kill me with the bear if you never see it. Let me just go and copy this real quick and show you something horrifying. <laughs> uh, maybe you want to become a monstrous wasp. It's fine. Mm. Don't worry about it. By the way, you avoided attacking this guy. You're welcome. Or you should you should thank uh Kim. <laughs> Language is <I> buzzing. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty straight good. Buzzing. <laughs> yeah, they're just straight buzzing. Um any, anyways, anything else to discuss? Bring up. Yeah, any 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 beasts can be uh used as long as they are within the CR uh and at or below elite rank. So a leader mook. Well yeah, no, I mean any any creature that we have as we made through the bestiary system, which will have them set up to be proper CRs. I am waiting for the day where I hear a druid try and play a Power Ranger. <laughs> and every time they transform, they do the whole thing of bear. I mean, anything, period, should have a CR. Yeah. Uh, the the CR system is very simple. It's just if if you're creating a mob for this level and it's of this rank, so mook through boss, it has this CR. Um, it's not some like a doc mom would be posting for them. If a DM happens to share a stat sheet from the beast here, I, I don't mind, especially if they're like, "Hey, look, druid, here's a stat sheet for your creature." Um, or if players learn certain statistics from in-game and like making their own beast cherries uh, i'm also totally okay with that especially if they make it super fancy like you know, adding their own lore document listings out on their uh the beast cherry um speaking of that i've been thinking about another system wherein we could uh reward players for making journals so like uh one of the things that i do in my game is if players write a session recap journal especially if it's in, in character they get bonuses uh, which, one, would help the DM in that they don't have to worry about writing a recap as detailed uh, for our purposes, because the players already did for them. And, uh, two, we get something that's nice and in character. Yeah, collaborative PGR. So I've been working on a system to do that. I'm trying to figure out how to blend it in with the current system I have into a living world system setting, though. But you know that that's that's another thing I've been, I've been yeah. Wait, we're not supposed to make our players just do it so we know that they were paying attention. <laughs> you can totally do that, but uh, I can <laughs> have a reward to incentivize them doing so. Uh, and the intention is that journals can be posted if the player wants it to be uh, to the world anvil, so everyone can see the adventures of the living world. Yeah, yeah. I have a lot of uh my players journals on. At my Obsidian Portal, as well as on the World Anvil, though the World Anvil ones, I believe, are hidden currently. But, uh, you know, it's the thing. People can learn of the stories and tales that our players tell. 
<laughs> and Rhea and daughter is going to be a hell of a ride. It will certainly be a ride. Um, but yeah, that is all I have. And if there's nothing else, I think right there will be the meeting. Seconds. All right. Good stuff. Good stuff. Appreciate everyone's faces, all the help you guys have been working on and all that good stuff. I'm going to call the meeting here and see you next time. Bye.